What's up everybody, my name's Andy and welcome back to Kit Guru. So many of you know that Ava Media are a driving force when it comes to products aimed at content creation. They make all sorts of devices like capture cards, webcams and USB condenser microphones. We've reviewed many of these in the past, but today we're taking a look at their brand new live streamer AM330 and this is a dynamic XLR microphone aimed at live streamers and content creators coming in at £91.99. That's a pretty reasonable price point for a dynamic XLR microphone, but is it any good? Let's find out. Don't forget to smash that like and subscribe button if you enjoy what we do here at Kit Guru, as it really does help us out and it's free. I'm going to start straight off by saying that this is not a budget audio solution. Unlike USB microphones that are pretty much plug and play and often come with everything that you need to get started, the AM330 is quite the opposite. It comes with no stand and it's designed to be used with a microphone arm, as the AM330 weighs 626.4 grams, you'll likely need a high quality arm which can cost around £100 or more. So being an XLR microphone means it requires either a dedicated audio interface or mixer that has its own preamps to power the microphone and give it enough clean gain to operate correctly without noise being introduced. These are a separate purchase and can start at around £100 for something like a Focusrite Scarlett Solo and can go to silly money very quickly. For this review, I'll be using Ava Media's brand new AX310 Nexus live stream control center a mixer which costs £320 and it does a whole array of things but for this review I'll just be using it to power the microphone without any effects or audio processing. Keep an eye out though as we will have a dedicated review for this coming soon. With that out of the way, let's look at what we get inside the box. It's a simple packaging and I actually quite like that. There's no faffing around, it's just a foam insert that houses the microphone with the mount already attached. We get a metal thread adapter to fit different mic stands and boom arms, an interchangeable coloured ring and a nice quality 3 meter long XLR cable too. I mentioned earlier that combined it weighs over half a kilo and that's because it has a fully metal design and construction and thankfully that includes the mount and thread. This is a big win for me, because this means that constant screwing and unscrewing from different stands and arms won't wear the threading as easily as plastic ones, and as such, it means it will last a lot longer. The metal construction also gives it an air of quality. The paintwork and overall build quality is impeccable too. It certainly doesn't feel cheap, and if anything, it looks and feels like a more expensive microphone than what it is. It's a two-part construction with the mount on the back end. You can adjust the mount's angle by loosening or tightening the bolts on either side. Towards the front we have the Ava Media logo on both sides, with two openings on either side that show the mesh guard around the capsule. On the back we find the XLR port, and on the front we have more of the mesh guard. Underneath the guard we have a built-in pop filter, which is great to see as this may mean that you don't have to purchase an external one, but we will test this out later to see how well it works. So the reason the grille is on the front is because that is the direction the capsule is facing. As with many dynamic and broadcast microphones, you speak into the top of the microphone rather than the side. You'll also notice that on the front there is a nice metal red accented part and this is purely aesthetic and it simply unscrews if you don't like it or you can replace it with the gunmetal styled spare that comes in the box to change it up a bit. Finally, underneath we have a sticker with a serial number and all that stuff that we're used to seeing. And we also have a magnetic sliding on and off switch. Another nice touch as many dynamic microphones don't have on or off switches on them. Other than the switch, there are no controls on the microphone. There's no gain controls or anything like that. And that's because, as mentioned earlier, you're required to have an interface or mixer to control this microphone. And this isn't a negative. This is just how it works with XLR microphones. Overall, first impressions are excellent. The build quality, design and aesthetics are top notch in my opinion. I think it will look great in live streams or podcasts. 
Some of you may be wondering what I mean when I say condenser or dynamic microphones. So essentially, there's two types. So you have condenser microphones, and these have a much wider frequency response and are typically very sensitive. This means that they can pick up noise and unwanted sounds, and maybe even cars driving by outside or people talking or shouting in another room. And this includes keyboard noise too. So condenser microphones work best with single person use, so only one person in a room using and recording with one microphone. You can also have one of these placed relatively far away and still perform quite well. However, on the other hand, dynamic microphones are almost the exact opposite. Dynamic mics are far less sensitive and generally only pick up sounds directly in front of them, and because of this, they are usually required to be placed right up against your mouth, or around 10 centimeters away. Ava Media even recommend a distance of 10 centimeters between yourself and the microphone in the manual. The AM330 also has a cardioid pickup pattern, and this means it's more sensitive to the front whilst rejecting sounds from the back. And that's why podcasts and radio shows use dynamic cardioid microphones, as you can have two people sat very close together with a microphone each without having issues like bleeding or echoing and stuff like that. Let's get to it, shall we? After all that, does it actually sound any good? So these tests are completely dry recordings with no effects at all. I won't add any post process processing to these audio clips other than maybe increasing the volume if I need to when I'm editing this video. I'm also going to compare the Ava Media AM330 with my personal Rode pod mic which comes in around the same price point. Okay, so this is the microphone test for the AM330 microphone from Ava Media, and I'm going into the Ava Media Nexus AX310 control center. So I'm using this as the sort of preamp and interface or mixer, if you want to call it that, um, to power this microphone. Because, like I said, this is an XLR microphone, it does not have any controls on it other than the on and off on the top here. But at the minute, I'm going to do a sort of extended test here just to change the gain and the mic level that the Nexus offers because it gives you two control sections. So at the minute, I've actually got the mic level at 100% and I'm probably about 10 centimeters away. I might keep going a little bit closer because I'm used to putting dynamic microphones right up against my mouth. Um, but for this, for this use case scenario, I'm about 10 centimeters away now, and this is at 100%. So on the Nexus itself, I can just dial that back. So I'm gonna keep talking around the same volume, and now we're at 80%, and it's looking like there's not as many clips going on here, and I can't really hear as many plosives, but then when I say things that have plosives, sometimes it sort of cuts through so there is an inbuilt pop filter paper pin keep bin rubber bulb tent and kick so you can hear some of those plosives like that especially when i say plosive itself so let's back up off the microphone a little bit so now i'm probably what 20 centimeters away and it does seem like it's dropped down in volume so again this is at 80 percent volume and the gain is actually at zero so i'm going to pull the volume up a little bit it is still sort of causing some plosive issues so let's go back to 100 percent, and i would say this is probably about 30 centimeters away roughly you shouldn't get as many plosives here because I'm quite far away from the actual capsule itself so let's go again so pen I heard a plosive then pen paper kick bin plosive so there there is still plosives there which is a little bit disappointing because I'm quite far away from the the capsule itself many dynamic microphones you actually want to be a little bit closer to to bring that gain down so that you don't introduce more noise so at the minute I can hear sort of the fans on my computers going I'm just going to be quiet for a second so you should be able to hear sort of some of that room noise I'm just going to type here so you can sort of hear again this is not ideal this is a hundred percent volume and I'm about 20 30 centimeters away so I'm going to keep talking and this is a mechanical keyboard so I'm just going to just hit random keys whilst I'm talking to see if you can hear this in the background Ava Media do recommend that you're about 10 centimeters away again I'd say I'm roughly in that now but I am noticing there's a fair amount of plosives so pop 
pen paper i would say you probably do need an external pop filter which is a shame because there is an internal one here but what i'm going to do now is just turn the volume right down to zero and then we're going to swap microphones okay so now we're listening to the rode pod mic so we are still using the live streamer nexus as the mixer or interface and it's currently at a hundred percent volume and the gain is at zero and you can see i'm about 10 centimeters away uh there's no plosives which is good so kick pin paper it's not clipping when i'm saying that so the, it might still spike slightly just because that's what plosives do but it's not actually clipping and distorting the audio so now i'd say i'm around 30 centimeters away so let's introduce some gain because it sounds like at least from my headphones that it's got a bit quieter so just to show you if i introduce a lot of gain this is plus 10 decibels of gain and now i'm quite far away you should be able to hear the fans in the background from my com both computers that I'm sat in between. So you should be able to hear some fan noise. And this is what I was saying, dynamic microphones, really, you want to have the gain as low as possible and you want the microphone as close as possible to stop introducing other sound. So what I'll do is I'll keep the gain at plus 10 decibels and then I'm gonna turn the volume down. And as I turn the volume down, I'm gonna get closer and closer and closer until I'm right up against the microphone. Now you may hear the proximity effects here and this is where it, you, you get that more radio presenter voice because it should amplify the bass notes in my my frequencies of my voice um, and that's why you often hear those sort of boomy radio presenters i'm right up against the microphone here and yet i'm still not clipping so let's try some uh, plosives so pin paper pick kick so I'm not clipping the audio file. Initially, I can hear straight away that this microphone is a lot cleaner when it's louder and closer to my mouth, which is personally how I prefer um, dynamic microphones. So what I'm gonna do now is just do a quick type test. So I'm just gonna one-handed smash the keyboard in the background and see if you can hear that over my voice itself. And then what I'll do is I'll put the volume and the gain right up and I'll back up off the microphone again and you'll probably be able to hear it. So I'm gonna stay quiet. This is at zero gain and 100% volume on the Nexus. Okay, so now let's do the opposite. That was at the microphone being 100% and now the gain's at 10 decibels boost. Um, so now there should be quite a lot of noise going on and that's why I've had to back off of the mic quite hard. So now I'm gonna type in the background and you can probably hear that pretty well. If I drop the mic gain, so from 10 decibels down to zero, you should have heard the instant cut and again, me being so close to the microphone, you should hear that sort of bassy notes. But in terms of what I'm hearing, Sadly, I'm, I'm thinking the pod mic sounds better. So I found the other, the Ava Media, the AM310, just to be a little bit distorted, especially when close. The pop filter really wasn't very good. Um, the, the plosives were coming through, and every time I said plosive or kick, pin, paper, whatever, uh, that would cause spikes in the audio, it was just distorting and clipping, whereas this is not. This has been the comparison, at least, between the Rode pod mic and the Ava Media AM310. Hopefully this has been a good extended test for you to hear the differences. So after listening back, I think the audio quality of the AM330 is good. The frequencies of my voice are captured well and the final audio recording is very clean too without too much unwanted noise. Of course, part of this is down to your audio interface or mixer. The better the interface, the cleaner, the gain it will provide from its preamps. If you have a very old or very cheap interface, then you may get much noisier recordings. Sadly, I'm slightly disappointed at its performance when very close. When trying to get that proximity effect, it just sounded distorted. And my other disappointment is the built-in pop filter. It just wasn't very good and it let almost all the plosives through. And I would say that you need an external pop filter to sort this out. In my opinion, the Rode pod mic not only sounds cleaner, but it also has a much better built-in pop filter. No matter what setting I had it at, no plosives came through whatsoever or 
clip to the audio. Okay, so who's the AM330 aimed at then? Well, yes, it's only $91.99, but with all the added extras you will need, it will soon push the price point up by double, triple, or maybe even more, unless you already have everything else and you're simply looking for a new microphone. This is aimed at anyone that's already established with their own live stream, their own YouTube channel, or even podcasts, and have grown out of their USB microphone or cheaper XLR microphone, or someone that just has a bigger budget and simply wants to start off with the best audio quality from the get-go. Alternatively, you could opt to go for other dynamic microphones, such as the Rode PodMic that we tested today, and these are between 90 and 100 pounds, or if you wanted the next step up, you could go for a Rode Podcaster at around 200 pounds, or if you just want the best of the best, regardless of cost, then get the industry standard, a Shure SM7B at around 350 pounds. Overall, I think the build quality, aesthetics, and construction of the AM330 is brilliant. It's a very aesthetically pleasing microphone when used on video, and it can sound good, but sadly, the distortion when used close up and the ineffective built-in pop filter makes me consider recommending the Rode PodMic at the same price point over this one. So what do you guys think? Will you be getting the AM330 microphone? Let us know down in the comments. If you've enjoyed this video, smash that like and subscribe button. Check out our merchandise down below. Check out our website daily for tech news. I'm Andy, this is Kit Guru, and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you for watching.